Hello, nerds. Welcome to your new favorite pop culture podcast. It's the Post Credit Show. I'm your host, Loosh, and this week we're going to do something a little different. Lockie and I have decided this week that we're going to have the week off. We went to a wedding last night, and we are both probably feeling a little less than what we'd like to admit right now. So uh, we're going to share with you a really exciting interview that we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, We are talking to what you probably regard as a a bit of an Australian legend. You've probably seen this man in Home and Away. You may have even seen him in All Saints. If you haven't seen him that, you've probably seen him in 2010's Australian horror movie The Reef. Or maybe even alongside Kate Winslet, Judy Davis, Liam Hemsworth and Hugo Weaving in 2015's The Dressmaker. Amidst the furor of 2008's most publicised court case and one of the most prominent stories in Australian history, Mr. Guyton Grantley rose to prominence for his portrayal of the notorious Australian underworld figure Carl Williams in the television series Underbelly. Grantley's gripping performance garnered widespread acclaim, especially amidst the backdrop of Williams' court case, captivating audiences, not just in Australia, but worldwide with his nuanced portrayal of the complex character, Carl Williams. Today, we get to hang out with Guyton, and we get to ask the questions that you want to hear. Now, Guyton was joining us from a, a cute little country town in the middle of Italy, so make sure you jump into uh, jump onto YouTube, uh, look up the post credit show, and look out for this interview because you'll actually get to see uh, Guyton talking directly to us from the most quaint of places in the world, which is a far cry from what Guyton was used to when he was here in Australia. Uh, but buckle up. Enjoy the interview. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Post Credit Show on all social media platforms. And uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your mum I said hi. No fucking worries. Yeah, there, there you go. he is. You're so Australian, mate. You're, we love it. <laughs> so, Gordon, you were um, you were born in Brisbane. I am Brizzy boy, born and bred, Brisbane yeah. land, San Fran, Brisco. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So growing up Bruce in Brisbane, oh, yeah, oh, I'm trying to remember. Everyone, everyone knows Bris Vegas, but my favorite yeah, Bris Vegas. Man. I grew up yeah. in the Gold Coast for a bit. Um, oh, yeah. So growing up in Brizzy, just a quick, we all got to know this. As an Australian to another Aussie, we got to know who do you go for in the rugby league, or who do you go for in the AFL? The Broncos and the Lions. Yeah, okay. interviews over. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're and the Reds. <laughs> Well, um, just very quickly. Sorry, Gordon. We just got to. Yeah, we're um, we're two poor shark supporters, mate. No, that's fine. I've got a good friend, Brendan Cow, who yes. is, uh, you know, a diehard shark supporter. Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. No, nah, awesome, man. So, <laughs> growing up in Brisbane, you know, playing rugby union as a kid, um, and then you went to acting. How, how did you? How did you get into acting? What made you want to go down that path? Uh, look, I've always, I'd always enjoyed performing. Um, I think it kind of started when I was about six, and I was in grade yep. one, and I did a look, I did a little puppet play for my my class. Like I just drew some pictures on a piece of paper and stuck it on the back of a pencil with a sticky tape, and I did a little kind of play, and um, and the kids really loved it. And I kind of, I, re- I think that that's when I realised that I had the ability to entertain people, and that like I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know, mum, I did a lot of speech and drama when I was just out of school, just growing up, like doing a Stedfords and things like that, and um, I did school plays, and then, you know, everyone knows it's probably not the most um, sustainable career, uh, being an actor, so I finished school, I didn't pursue it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I did an arts degree, and just did all these different subjects, I did like journalism and business and psychology and English and um and after after a year I realized that I just really wanted to try acting so I figured I'd audition for QUT which is where um like a really really quality course it's like NIDA yep. or WAPA yep. or VCA yep. yep and um yeah got in and uh so that would begin my you know next three years of studying acting and and I realized the moment I walked in there, I was like, this is what I want to do. No, nah, unreal, man. Yeah. Unreal. So that's where we, that's what got me going, I guess. Yeah. 
So the early 2000s was when you really kind of got into a few roles. I know you were in a Danny Deck Chair, um, which was one of your first. And then, what, a couple episodes of All Saints. Um, there was another one. Was it, C, was it Sea Patrol that you did an episode in or? No, uh, not Sea Patrol. God, I can't, can't remember. Everyone's been on Home and Away. Everyone's been on All Saints. Oh, that's sorry, Every, sorry. Ten everyone. episodes of Home and Away. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think this one knows a bit more about your career than you do at this point, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was 20 years ago. Um, yeah, no, fair call, man. Yeah, no, Home and Away was fun. I, um... I got I had a fight with Chris Hemsworth. Um, I, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was the ex boyfriend of Chris Hemsworth's wife. Oh wow! And I turned up, I turned up into town, and and uh, I was a low grade kind of marijuana dealer, <laughs> and um, and I ended up smoking a joint and um, having a psychopathic episode, <laughs> and um, and locking her up in the house and going going just go full crazy. Yeah. And and Thor himself was batting on the door trying to get in oh, and save his wife shit. from the, sounds, from the crazy, like a, crazy guy that smoked the joint. Sounds <laughs> like a Tuesday in Byron, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe uh, maybe if Chris can make it to the, to the Marvel Universe, maybe I can yep. too one day. We'll see. Yeah. No, well, we hope. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. So you went from home and away, and then, you know, of course, we're going to ask you, you've landed one of the biggest roles of your career, which I'm guessing half the world has seen, playing Carl Williams in Underbelly. How, how, did you, how did you get that role? What did your agent say to you about the role? Or, you know, what, what was the process of obtaining such a, you know, iconic role, especially with Australian history? Like, all of us people in Melbourne especially know about Carl Williams. How did how did they approach you to to progress and move forward into that role? It's pretty. I'm pretty bloody lucky, really. <laughs> I'd say just because I look like the guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, gen, the general process with casting in Australia is, you know, there's there's a production that gets greenlit, and then there's a casting director is employed, and then the casting director sends out a brief to all the acting agents. Yep. And all the acting agents then submit their their talent, saying, "I think Guyton would be good for this role," and then they either say, "Yes, we'll see him," or not. And then you go in and do an audition. So, in terms of the audition for Underbelly for Carl Williams, I, I was from Brisbane, so I didn't even know who he was. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the audition scene was set at the Crown Casino, so I turned oh, wow. up in a suit. So I turned up for my audition in a suit, like all yep. you know, like Robert De Niro in Casino kind of style um and uh <laughs> good fella good fella <laughs> yeah and then robinson who's the casting director at moment and she's like um he's a bit he's a bit scruffy this guy maybe take your shirt out and you know yeah, yeah. Out a bit. i mean i had looked i had looked him up on the internet i don't because i think we did have the internet back then um and you know i had i did have an idea of what was going on but uh yeah uh anyway I did the audition well enough, obviously, and um, yep. got the job. And then um, the day I got the job, I went and bought a six-pack of donuts and, um, <laughs> and, a, and a carton of beer and, and, and got busy. <laughs> was, it like, uh, was it one of those things where it's like, right, I kind of look like the guy, and now I need to stack the, pa- the, the weight on so I can actually look like the guy? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It was, um, <laughs> it was a fun process. I actually went to see a nutritionist. Uh, wow, and sh- and she was uh, she was a bit perplexed. She's like, normally people come here to uh, learn how to lose weight, not how to put yeah. weight on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you reverse Christian bailing her, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was twenty years ago when people were weren't as you know educated, I guess, in nutrition and stuff. And and uh, so what was fascinating was she's like, uh, drink lots of fruit juice. Because it's, it's just full of sugar. It's full of yeah, fructose, yeah, yeah, sure. you know. But it's a natural sugar, so it's going to be better for you than, than kind of saturated fats like eating lots of pizza and burgers and stuff like that. So I just went to Boost Juice and just like, and they've even got a calorie count next to all their drinks. Well, they did back in the day. 
And I just like, give me that one with the 5,000 calories. I want that one every day. I've got to say, man, you're a good looking rooster. So when I saw you jump on, uh, when, you, when I saw you jump into that, that role and saw how, how big you'd gotten, I was like, whoa, there's some padding there, or there's some like Colin Farrell playing the penguin going on here, or what's going on? <laughs> how much VB did you drink? Uh, <laughs> it was Crown Lager back then. Oh, know, oh yeah, no, the, fair the enough. Crownies, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, know, fair um, enough. Uh, up and goes are good too. They're a good tip if anyone. Yeah, I've got six in the quick. fridge. I've got six in the fridge. Yeah, yeah he's a he's <laughs> good oh, I'm, all, I'm also uh, on the <laughs> <laughs> shit. So you actually I'm, got I'm, a you got a I'm just um, one more thing on the on the weight right. stuff. Like I've I've played Carl three times now. Like there yeah, was Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um there was the mock the mock bell one and um uh and then informer for yes. uh, 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 Nicola Gobbo. Um and so, you know, first time I was twenty seven, then I was thirty two and then the last time I was like thirty eight. And uh, oh, wow. it's a lot. It's a lot harder to get off when you're thirty. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> that's what she said. Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Sorry, I've been watching The Office recently. Steve Carell. That's what she said after everything. Um, <laughs> what What was it like though, playing a role such as Carl Williams, where you won most outstanding? Sorry, you won the most outstanding actor award. I mean, that would have been a, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Like. Oh, it's huge. It's, you know, it's it's one of the big, biggest things I've ever done in my life. And yeah. it's like, you know, awards are, awards are nice. You know, they're not the end, be all and end all. Um, yep, yep. Uh, but but it certainly is, especially the AFI, which is now the, the Arctos. Yes, um, yes. Uh, you know, that's that's voted by, it's not like a logo where it's most popular. It's, this is, uh, you know, voted by industry, industry yeah. professionals and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it you know it, we're very we're very vulnerable and insecure creatures us actors as schmackers mm-hmm. and um it's nice to kind of have that that uh that validation, validation that kind of that right, validation yeah. that's the word yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah um and also it just helps in getting more work so no you know, absolutely like, absolutely lots of offers came in after that so it was really well you've really done great. you've you've done a lot since um I mean you, um the um house husbands obviously was that springs to mind i mean that was one of the most watched australian tv dramas in australian history um really that's good to know i didn't yeah, I, I mate, know it was popular one no, it, it, mate, it's, it's 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 up there it's definitely up there oh, great and it, it, it's on it's on what's it called uh, stand. Stand. it's on stand oh cool uh, you've, well, maybe yeah, I'm too for some residuals. <laughs> oh, 100%. Oh, you got to ring up the bloke that directed it, mate. you gotta, you got to be getting rewarded for that. But um, no, so you friends was great. Yeah, sorry, mate. Go. Oh, no, sorry. No, um, please continue. Just, yeah, tell us about House Husbands and, you know, your, your, your um, you know, how you went on that and, you know, are there any standouts from that, from that TV series? And look, it was just a lot of fun because, yeah. um, Gary Sweet, Reese Muldoon, Farrah Durrani, and I—we just we got along really well. And then obviously um, uh, Julia and um, Natalie Saliba and um, uh, Julie Morris, sorry. Um, uh, you know, and there's always supporting cast too. Everyone—it was just—it's just a party. We just had a yeah, really man. fun time all the time. And it was the way it was produced. It was, you know, it, well, what was the term? I think they came up with a dramedy. You know, it's not, drama, you know, it's not a yeah, comedy, yeah, yeah. it's it's not a drama, it's not a soap opera either. It was just like it had it had elements of everything. So you could you could do some serious acting and then then you could really piss about and have a lot of fun as well. And then, Absolutely. Uh, you know, doing the overacting with you know, girly squeals and stuff like that. And, <laughs> um, uh, so look that was that was fun too. Yeah, we just it was just a really lucky opportunity to be yep. to be to be cast in that and that's what uh, brought me to Melbourne um, permanently. I met my wife there, and when I was shooting oh, well, my husband, and congratulations, and, uh, and then I stayed. So yeah. yeah. Did you give uh, Did you give Faris any tips about playing uh, in Underbelly season three? Or uh, <laughs> no, he'd already done that. Um, I didn't know him then, but um, he did a brilliant job, obviously. Um, 
like oh shit yeah, that's right that was released in 2010 sorry mate yes 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 no you're right um but oh great man how loud's that can't hear it can't, we can't hear anything mate we can only hear oh, you good. we can only <laughs> hear oh, you yeah oh good oh, is someone doing a burnout something. on a vespa or something <laughs> no no some, some construction or something anyway um for us for us yeah i don't know what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. I missed. I got the dates mixed up. I thought. Um, I thought season three was aligned with twenty twelve when you started House Husbands. So no, that's that's on me. Hey, tell me. I'm I'm really curious because um, obviously Carl Williams is such an iconic character that you played. Um, you know, to this day, every time I see your face pop up on my TV, I'm like, hey, it's Carl Williams. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you get that a lot from people still to this point when 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 you're around. Um, but. What was it like playing Carl? Like, did you get the opportunity to talk to anyone involved with that that world? Because that was a pretty severe world. Yeah, yeah. Look, we were really lucky because we had Victorian police, we had Vicpol involved um, yeah, yeah. from the start. And so we got access to a lot of the detectives from the from the Piranha Task Force. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, so I um, I got to talk to them extensively about their experience with Carl. Um, I wasn't allowed to meet him. Um, yep, yep. And I'm actually really glad I didn't in mm-hmm. the end because, um, look, at the end of the day, like, it's still a character. It's still a, it's still a dramatization. Yeah. Nothing's, nothing's ever perfectly true. Like, um, so it's, it's, it's very heavily based on him, but the script isn't exactly... Exactly. Nothing can be exactly true. Of you know, course. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it does re- does call for some of your own interpretation. Mm. But um, I also met quite a few colourful characters um, out and about. You know, in the in in the bars and stuff of Melbourne when while we yep. were shooting, and um, people would come up and introduce me and invite me into the toilet, perhaps. And um, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> to, to that some, of, some of their wares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, look. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. What else? Roberta, Roberta tried to track me down quite a few times, and did she really? Um, wow. So did Nick Gatto, but I managed to avoid them for quite a while. So um, when you when you say they tried to track you down, was it like ferocious, or was it a message on on your phone, or what? What was? What would? Can you give no, us a bit more? No, no, just, oh, well, she came to set one morning. Um, oh wow. She, Found out where we were shooting, and she came to set. Um, but Cat Stewart and I—I I think she was trying to meet Cat, the okay. lady. Cat okay. Stewart, the lady playing Roberta. Um, yep, yep. But we were we were away at another location shooting, so they, she missed us, and they, you know, security took her away. But um, oh, look, I don't think she had any 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 problem with us. She just wanted to meet yep. us and say hello, and yep, yep. Um, but we just didn't want to get too close. To that yeah, stuff. of course. You've got to, you've got to no, keep absolutely. yourself separate. Yeah. Look, I, yeah. look on, the, on the note of getting too close to it, um, <laughs> uh, I was telling Lockie before we started recording the interview, um, I was actually working uh, on Ligon Street in Carlton at the Starbucks across the road from La Pochetta is the day that Benji Veneman was shot. I was actually at work wow. yeah. the day yeah. it all happened. And that was about as close as I wanted to get to yeah. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, like it was, it was crazy down here in Melbourne because obviously then there was the court case because it couldn't be broadcast down here in Victoria while while Carl Williams was going through his criminal trial because they didn't want it to prejudice the the jury and all that kind of stuff. So it must have it must have made for an interesting uh, telling for you because not only did it come out nationally except Victoria and you kind of you know burst onto everybody's scenes really quickly, but then it came out again in Victoria a year later. It was like oh me all over the place again, like. Did that have any benefits for your your acting career moving forward, or was it just much of the same? Oh, look, it's, it's all such a whirlwind. <laughs> mm. um, but the, back to your 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 little, your little story on Ligon Street. I mean, that's that's the reason why it was so successful. Um, yeah, especially in Victoria, because everyone has a story. Yeah, everyone yeah. I meet in it's Melbourne, so out in the open, yeah. like. Yeah. My my dog's previous owner's flatmate, you know, was was in this pub when so and so was shot. And, you know, my my uncle used to go to the races with so and so, or like yeah, like yeah. I went to school with this kid's son, and um, you know, everybody, you know, so many people have told me that they were at 
Oz kicked the day that you know um, Moran, yeah, Moran's were shot, and um, yep, yep. so uh, yeah, like, biggest Oz kick crowd in history. Melbourne, right I, there. Melbourne, I <laughs> oh, grew up geez. with it on the front page. Yeah, yep. doorstep every every day, and these guys were like celebrities. They were their own type of celebrity. Mm. It's, it was, you know, it was a bit exciting to know know someone or be a bit yeah, part man. of it, or yeah, to be yeah. able to say I was across the road when so and so was shot because everyone knew who these people were. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't even know who half the actors are these days, but everyone knows who the gangsters are. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it it. It changed my life, that show, and uh, for, for many good things and, and bad things. You know, the the, the, pop, the notoriety was 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 hard at times. I, I had yep, yep. I, I lived in Bondi at the time, and I had I mean, you know, I was in Bondi, but I I had paparazzi outside my door for three or four months, and every wow. day they'd just be be there, and they'd just follow me everywhere, and people are like, "Well, don't live in Bondi." I'm like, "Fair enough," but you know, like. I'm just going to get a coffee. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, you can't really go anywhere or do anywhere. The, the fame was pretty full on. And mm. um, I called it the crows because um, you just, anywhere I walk, you just hear cow, 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 oh, cow. Oh, cow. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the bloody seagulls from Nemo. Mine, yeah, mine, mine. mine. Yeah, so what? Yeah. So what? So Guyton, what was it like stepping back into that role in um, Fat Tony and Co. And then back in um, in former three hundred three A. So you've obviously had the hype around um, Underbelly, and then yeah. you've had to go through it all again. How did um, Lev Hill put it really well? He played Jason Moran. Um, yep. It was like it's like putting on an old, really old pair of of old underwear mm. you know, that you haven't worn for a few years, like. It felt felt really familiar, and but just a bit, just a bit off. Like, it just felt like. Just, I remember just, this sweaty <laughs> sensation. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lockie's, then, Lockie's laughing. Then, <laughs> Sorry, Lockie's oh. laughing because he wears old underwear quite frequently. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, then God. you know what I'm talking about, mate. You, you oh, know what I'm talking about. Hey, it's, yeah. you, know, you can't buy that comfort, mate. Once you've worn in, you don't need to leave it. You don't need to change it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I keep laughing. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay. um, oh, wow. Yeah. It was exciting. We've all, we've all enjoyed you watching play such a prolific character in Australian history and um yeah like it's a it's a uh, it's, it's unreal what you've done but right, you've question just, sorry quick, question for you kate yep. winslow judy davis hugo weaving liam hemsworth what is it like working with a cast list like that that is insanity that's massive man yeah that was um well sarah snook and um you know uh uh terry fox and uh, yep. alison white and shady jacobson and rebecca gibney and um, gosh, there were many others in there too. Like it was, um, mm. just it was a dream come true. Um, and to especially have scenes with Kate Winslet, like just yeah, me man. and her. I just, I, I did a scene with just me and her. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, I was just sitting there going, if, if when I graduated from acting school, I was just a little twenty-one-year-old, yeah, bright-faced, bushy-tailed, brizzy boy. If someone yeah. had said. One one day you're going to act with Kate Winslet. And I would have just slapped him in the face. Like, oh, man. did she? Um, did did she ask no. you to draw her like one of your French girls? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, but... <laughs> no, she didn't ask you that. But she she is a, a bloody legend. Like she swore yeah. like a trooper. She wasn't. She wasn't special in any way like she yeah, just yeah. she she some nights she just stayed and slept in um slept in her trailer because sometimes we're out you know in regional rural areas she didn't yep, she yep. didn't need to go back to her hotel or anything she's like oh, i'll sleep here um yeah she wasn't wasn't too too big for anyone she was uh she was really lovely oh, it's unreal man and um, awesome. one more and her judy davis judy Sorry. davis was funny yeah actually. tell us um because she's and she's kind of a bit the opposite. She was she was very uptight and very kept to herself, and um, you know, uh, 
I my very first scene, I was terrified, but mm-hmm. I was very lucky that all I had to do was be asleep. So it was very very convenient way to kind of ease my way in. I just had to be yep, asleep yep, in this, yep. this bed in the background, and and uh, I I tried. There were, it was just Judy and I, and we had to be sitting there together for a while while they fiddled with lights and stuff. And so I, I tried out a joke. I was like, I, I rehearsed this scene for eight hours last night, and um, and I don't think she got it. I don't think. Did you guys get that joke just then? No. <laughs> That's okay, that so I had to be. I had to be asleep, right? I was oh, sleeping, and fuck, so right. I, and I rehearsed this for eight hours last night. Um, I mean, oh, I, I, yeah, I crack nah. a lot of jokes. I crack a lot of jokes, and they don't. No one gets them. So right. I mean, maybe, maybe it was me. Maybe it was me, not her. Okay, but, so, uh, Guyton, what's your yeah. best joke that you've got? So we just, just for reference, we uh, we end every episode because we have like a post credits joke because we're called the post credits show. You got to do something after the credits, right? Right. And we right. have a stupid dad joke that we do at the end of every single episode. So tell us your best dad joke. Best dad joke. Uh, well, my 7-year-old's got a good knock knock one at the moment. Yeah, what do you got, um, man? Okay. Uh knock knock. Who's there? Europe. Europe who? <laughs> no, <laughs> Europe who? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> All right. I've got one for you, Gordon. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Arch. Arch who? Bless you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, that's rubbish. I'm a big fan. I went through a stage where I was really big on pirate jokes and really big on, like, name jokes. Oh, give us one. Give us one, man. Like, what do you call a girl with one leg shorter than the other? Eileen. What do you what do you call a girl? What do you call a girl standing in the middle of a tennis court? What a net a net. Um, what do you call a girl who's like standing with one leg either side of like a ravine? What uh, Brid- Bridget? Um, what do you call a guy sitting sitting on his um knees? What Neil? What do you call? <laughs> What do you call a guy with no arms and no legs in the ocean? What? Bob. Bob. Um, what do you call? What do you call a guy with his head stuck in a hole? What? what Warren. Um, what? Warren. Rabbit Warren. I don't know. There's, there's, oh, there's, Warren. Yeah. What do you call a guy standing in a hole? What? Phil. What do you call? Um, <laughs> Anyway, they go. There's so many. Oh what do you call a guy laying on the ground? What? Matt. Um, <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah, oh I my like fucking it. god, oh, bro. fantastic! <laughs> hey, um, we've also been we've been following your Instagram, your TikToks. Um, you seem to be like a bit of a master chef, as well. Huh. Has that has that come from moving over to Italy, or were you a massive? Cook fan back in Oz. I've always been a keen foodie. Yeah, um, yeah, and and I've always liked cooking. But I think I think this happened to a lot of people during, especially everyone, a lot of people in Melbourne mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. during lock, lockdown. I I reckon I became the best cook in London in Melbourne uh, during lockdown. I love um, that. I, I was locked down in Melbourne, but I became the best cook in London. Yeah, no, nah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, sorry, I meant to say <laughs> Melbourne. Um, yeah, I, I just did a, I did a lot of cooking, and my uh, our neighbours who are some of our best friends. Um, yep, we got together. Well, we didn't physically get together, but we we got a jar <laughs> and we put all countries, we were all the countries of the of the world into a jar, and each week we'd pick a country mm-hmm. out, and and I'd cook mm-hmm. for Friday, and he'd cook for Saturday, or vice versa, and so I started cooking like. Moroccan food and Indian food wow. and like yeah, wow. Swedish, Swedish food and you're like it was just really fun to research and then yeah man yeah yeah and then head to the head to the Preston markets and then you know um, and uh, yeah and and just learn you learn a lot just deep dive into YouTube and just go for it yeah you really love so, Preston do you <laughs> well I mean I live in Ivanhoe so well, I, oh, I did live in Ivanhoe I, I went to Ivanhoe Grammar as a kid. Oh right! Oh yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, didn't do well. Don't think I'll be able to afford to send my kids there. <laughs> oh, obviously didn't graduate. So yeah, don't don't send them there, mate. <laughs> hey, um, 
this is this is something I know that you're you've, you're it's very close to your chest. You've got your you've got a charity that you sponsor, Polished Man. Um, are you able to share just a little bit how you got involved with this charity? You know, why did it reach out to yourself? And tell us a bit about the tell, charity. Tell us a bit do. about the charity, if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh look, yeah. Well, there's there's two that I'm an ambassador for. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. yep. Polished Man, and the other one's Heart Kids. Heart um, Kids, yeah. Probably more. Probably more active with heart kids now. Okay. Um, yep. But po- Polish Man, fantastic. It's um, it's, it was um, uh, uh, started. Uh, oh God, I just got his surname. Elliot. Um. Uh, 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 how about that? <laughs> anyway. No, no, you're right. He's a good. Elliot's a good bloke. Elliot. We'll edit that out. Elliot. Elliot's a good bloke. Um, it'll come to me. Um, look. It's basically to stop violence and abuse to children. Um, yeah, yeah. And this guy was in, he was in Thailand and he was doing some work with some NGOs and, and the, the, he was in a slum and this little girl um, came up and asked him if she could paint paint his nails. Um, and, and that just kind of really moved him. And so he decided that um, a great way to to start a conversation about child abuse would be to have one fingernail painted. Um, especially yeah. when it started like six or seven years ago, it was, you know, it was a bit more taboo for men to be, um, you know, polishing their nails. Um, and so, sure, you can, like raising money is great. You know, you can, you can go to help many, many things and, and do lots of good. But Absolutely. I think a lot of, a lot of the issues in, a lot of the trouble with a lot of the issues in, in, in life and modern society is, is um, the lack of communication. And yeah, especially yep. when there's abuse happening in the domestic household. Um, and so if you have a, a painted nail and you're at the pub or whatever, your mate's like, what's that about? And you're like, well, it's about child abuse. And, um, yep. and, I, and we need to talk about it more because it just becomes a bit taboo. And if you might, you might notice something that you think's a bit off and, and not mention it, but if if everyone's talking about it a lot more, then yeah, you man. won't be as scared to kind of <clears throat> say something. Um, and the other one is Heart Kids. Uh, my cousin um, Mel. It's it basically Heart Kids is, provides assistance and money for um, for kids and families who have CHD, which is congenital heart disease. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my my cousin um, tragically lost her little boy, uh, Mikey. Uh, about uh, seven years ago um, to CHD. And so it is something that's, no pun intended, very close to my heart. No, of course. And, um, of course. and yeah, they, it's kind of like McDonald's, Ronald McDonald House, you know, they just provide yep. a lot of assistance. But it's very expensive to to be, have children in hospital for months on end, you know, while they're receiving treatment. Yep. And, and a lot of regional families have to find accommodation, et cetera, and all that stuff. So, um, and also going towards finding a cure and prevention and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so, yep. yes. Uh, heart, heart kids is another really thing, great thing that's um, very close <clears> to my heart as well. No, that's yeah. beautiful, man. So let's put a shout out. Polished man and heart kids. Um, May they're very blessed to have an ambassador such as yourself to be, you know, associated with both those foundations. Um, yeah, man. That's that's about, yeah. It's amazing what you do for them. Cheers. Um, Cheers. We've got um, Casa Voice. Yeah, Casa Voce. Can you, can you Voice explain house. what's going on in your house? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I live in Italy, right? Yes, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the reasons why we, we're here is because I kind of can, because, well, my wife's, my wife's a dual citizen. She's yeah, yeah. an Italian-Australian. Um, and so she's got a passport, and now all the kids have their passports. And because I'm married to her, I can come too. Um, so she's got a job. She's a school teacher. She's got a job uh, teaching at an international school here. And ever since lockdown, uh, look, I don't really do a lot of acting anymore. I'm still auditioning. It's just it's really starting to slow down. Mm-hmm. But I've always been a voice artist. I've always do voiceovers for radio yeah, and commercials and TV commercials. And, and so when lockdown happened, everyone had to set up their own studios in their own house. Um, and so I was doing them from my wardrobe and, 
and uh, got all the gear and stuff and set up. It was going really well. And then once we all came out of it, a lot of the, the big studios were like, no, don't come in, just do it from home. So wow. I figured like, well, I can just keep doing my work from my wardrobe in Italy, can't I? Um, so, you know, I was up at 4.30 this morning uh, doing a job. Yep. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's not, not the funnest thing to do, but... I've now got the rest of the day off, and yeah, <laughs> you've got to go to the beach. What go to the beach and have morning? a sleep on the beach. Well, <laughs> you're not in Byron, mate. You can't do that. Here. <laughs> um, this morning, I was doing a ad for Jamoan's latest show at the Crown at the Palms. Yep, yep, yep. And and I also did some. I, I do regular promotions for Par- Paramount Plus. Um, so I was yeah nice. doing some stuff oh. for them too. Oh, right. we're gonna keep we're gonna keep a listen out for them because we're both Paramount Plus members and we vigorously watch every single thing that basically gets released on there. So I think you'll you'll only hear the ads on Channel Ten, I think, because right. uh, Paramount oh. owns Channel Ten. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah, what's yeah. um, what's next? What are you doing now? What's uh, you got anything coming up? You want to tell us about? Um, I yeah, I did a couple of things before we left. Uh, there's a film called Nut Farm, um, which yes. is uh, starring, Art Barker, starring Art, Art Barker. Art Barker. Is that that one? Yep, yep. Yep. Um, it's a quirky, quirky, crazy little comedy with some silly characters. Um, uh, so I play Farmer D, who owns um, D's Nuts. Uh, he's a macadamia farmer. Um, and uh, <laughs> so there's a... There's a shit ton of nut, of nut puns. Um, and that shit only appeals to people our age, too. Yeah. That's, uh, like, that's, yeah. that's fucking funny, man. You cannot... Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's some really good jokes in there. And ours is, ours is great in it. He was, he was so nervous. He was so nervous he's never acted before. But I was, I was like, it's, you act every time you get on stage, mate. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's a performance, you know? Um, Madeline West is in it, and she's fantastic. Roy Billing, and um, you know, a bunch of other oh, great actors too. So yeah, that's I think that hits cinemas in middle of March, March 14th or something like that. All right. Um, mm. And I have a tiny, tiny part in um, in a new Night Channel Nine series. Um, I can't even remember what it's called. I think they changed the name. <laughs> um, <Okay, now. laughs> Leanna Walsman. Leanna Walsman's the lead. <laughs> I was in a TV series, but sorry, guys. I don't know what the fuck it was called. Well, it was two years ago. You know, I just moved on. <laughs> I was only there for two days. Uh, how, how long? <laughs> two years ago. Yeah. I was no, only how... on set for two days. Oh, and it was okay. two years no, that's ago. fair enough. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So what? What's sorry? What's coming out in March? I want everyone to know. Nut Farm. Go, Nut go Farm. See it in cinemas. Yeah. March fourteenth. All right. We're going to see the Nut Farm. All right. Have your phone ready. We'll be there. Right we'll be. We'll be facetiming okay. you that night. <laughs> All right. Okay. Give me some warning. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be drinking that night or what? <laughs> well, you keep forgetting that I'm in Italy, so like. Yeah. No. We we thought you might have a glass of red. I know. What, what is it? Ten thirty a.m. in the morning. It's yeah, it's almost eleven. Yeah, eleven. Hey, right. um, Here you go. Cheers to yeah. that. But it's not. It's not unusual to see people like having mm. a glass of wine or a beer at ten o'clock. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. But the difference is they don't get drunk. They just have one drink and then. Yeah, they're, they're smart. They're not. Back. They're not a bunch of skippy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Guyton, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Um, we've really enjoyed getting Thank to know you a little bit better and, and, and getting to know a bit more about your background and, and what it uh, what what you've managed to achieve throughout your career. We're really stoked to see you in Nut Farm. Um, we're stoked to see you when you finally hit your uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Absolutely, yeah. man. When you're there, remember yeah. us. Um, we'll be expecting you and Hemsworth to rock up down the road and uh, do an in-person podcast sometime as the two biggest superstars <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, uh, me and Hem Doggy just, just just chewing the fat. Yeah. When you're back in Melbourne, let us know. We'll go for a beer at uh, the Carnegie Hotel in uh, Carnegie. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be really well, fun. Thank you. Awesome. Absolute pleasure, Guy. And thank you so much, brother. We love you, man. Thanks, mate. Take Cheers, care. Take care, brother. All right. Out of it, Ed. Yeah, one time, brother.